Okay, <clears throat> new chapter, new topic, uh, really change of pace. Uh, we're we're going to start looking at uh, two-dimensional, so when we say plane stress, we mean stress in a plane, stress in 2D, um, <clears throat> and particular stress transformation. All right, so uh, any uh, 2D object, um, if we were to look at an infinitesimally small square, a differential element, uh, and if we look at this square, let me draw it a little bit bigger, actually. If we were to look at that square, it can have three types of stresses. All right, first of all, it can have this stress. Uh, I'll call it sigma x. It is the, um, so let, let's say, 2D general state of stress at a point, <clears throat> or really an area, a square, <clears throat> We can have sigma x, right, as the normal stress in the x direction. And we are going to call this positive if it is in tension. All right, looking back, a lot of our 2D problems, <clears throat> we kind of have this um, positive sign convention. So for 2D, we're going to say tension is positive. Uh, it can also have normal stress on this face, sigma y. Normal stress means it is perpendicular to, if we were to cut it right here, uh, <clears throat> perpendicular to that uh, face, normal stress in the y direction. But we're not going to call y positive or negative. We're going to call tension positive, compression negative. <clears throat> and then the last thing that it could have <clears throat> is this tau. I'll call it tau xy. It's the shear stress in the xy plane. And if you have it up here, you also have it down here equal and opposite. <clears throat> and so you can also have tau xy. That is the shear stress. in the xy plane. All right, now what are we going to call positive? What are we going to call negative right here? Uh, we are going to call this a uh, positive if it is... <clears throat> I always kind of look at this top right corner as my positive corner. If it's pointed into that top right corner, <clears throat> it's positive. Uh, the only other option is a way right here and a way right here. So that's, that's the only other option right there which would be negative. Okay, so that is the general <clears throat> state of stress. If I want to know, hey, what's the stress on that element? Well, it could have sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy. You know, it can have a normal stress in the x, normal stress in the y, and it can have a shear stress in that plane. <clears throat> but <clears throat> if we look at a different angle, if we tilt our head, if we if we draw an instead of drawing a square right here, if we draw a square right here, uh, it might have different sigma x, sigma y, and taus. Okay, uh, if <clears throat> if we were to let me go back here, uh, if we were to cut it right here, then we would have this. Uh, sigma x on out of the cut and we would have tau xy on that cut uh, but if we were to cut it same location but if we were to cut it at a different angle like a different orientation we would have a different x and a different tau xy we'll call them x prime and tau xy so uh, let's just kind of write that um, if, all right, if we look at it, probably a better way to say this, from a different orientation, and, and we're going to keep the same forces, keep the same loadings, keep the same external loadings, external loadings, the stresses will be different. All right. 
right, here's what I'm talking about. So, if we started with some element <clears throat> that had some sigma x, some sigma y, oh, and also that sigma x is going to be the same as that sigma x because this is in equilibrium. That sigma y is going to be the same as that sigma y, right, on the other side of it. <clears throat> and tau x, y. If we wrote, stayed at the same place, kept the same loadings, kept the same orient, kept the same, um, all the same forces were acting on my object the same way. But if we maybe, I don't know, rotated this so many degrees counterclockwise, for instance. So here was our old X and Y, but here is like an, a new x and y axes, right? I, I rotated this by, let's say, 30, 40 degrees counterclockwise. Then we will have a new sigma x prime that is different from our old sigma x. We will have a new sigma y prime that is different from my old sigma y. And we'll have a new tau x y, tau x prime y prime, that is different from my old tau x prime y prime. Okay, so either think about it as taking an element and um, changing the orientation, or think about it as just cutting it at a different angle. Maybe the, this this piece of wood or something has have have grains, and we want hey, what's the stress along the grain? <clears throat> we want to know the stresses at a different orientation. All right, so. Let's transform. Let's take our old stresses and transform them to new stresses at a different orientation. Uh, we could, <clears throat> just by taking, I don't think I'm going to do this, maybe one day, uh, just by taking the, the fact that stress is force over area uh, and summing the forces equals zero, <clears throat> we could take an old <clears throat> square that had an old sigma x, sigma y, tau xy. If we cut it, let's cut it right here. If we cut it right here and tried to find the new <coughs> sigma x prime <coughs> and the new tau x prime y prime, um, and we just took all the stresses, changed them to forces, sum the forces equal to zero in the x direction, sum of the forces equal to zero in the y direction. <clears throat> this is what we would get. So, <clears throat> and, and we have a, these are on our formula sheet. These are equations that we don't have to memorize. Uh, we can just refer back to these equations. My new stress at my new <clears throat> axis x prime is the old sigma x plus the old sigma y divided by 2. So kind of the average of the old normal stresses plus the difference sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 times cosine of 2 theta. So whatever theta we want to change the orientation um, we got to plug in 2 theta to, and, and take the cosine of that times that. <clears throat> That's not it. Plus tau xy sine of 2 theta. Tau, my old. So these are all my old, 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 old. The, the, the stresses <clears throat> at the regular, the standard, the zero orientation. And if I want to move them in the angle theta, <clears throat> then I plug in theta, but don't forget this is 2 theta. And then put it in your calculator, right? And, and there is my new sigma x prime, my new normal stress <clears throat> in my new x direction. Okay? The new shear stress, sigma x prime y prime, is <clears throat> this, negative sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 sine 2 theta plus my old 
tau xy cosine of 2 theta. Alright, and those two equations, <clears throat> those two equations are on your equation sheet, on your formula sheet, where you can just plug in, hey, okay, what sigma x do I have, what sigma y do I have, what tau do I have, and then what angle do I want to um, find the new stresses at. <clears throat> Alright, now, that, that those are the only two equations we could, um, we have on our equation sheet. But for uh, for finding sigma y, we've got two options. We can plug in finding the new sigma y. Two options. We can plug in theta plus ninety degrees. So, for instance, <clears throat> if I wanted to find my new stresses at thirty. Uh, then I would write, come it right here and plug in 30. Okay, but if I want to find the sigma y after I've rotated it to 30, uh, this would give me the sigma x. Well, I know that sigma x and sigma y are really just off by 90 degrees. If I kept on rotating it another 90 degrees, so if I plugged in 120 right here and 120 right here, <clears throat> then I would get my sigma y. Or if we think about how sines and cosines work, uh, if we're off by um, <clears throat> if we're off by 90 degrees, <clears throat> we can change uh, these pluses to minuses. Change pluses to minuses right here. Let me show you. You can change that plus to a minus and that plus to a minus. So that's what I'm going to do. So now, let me warn you, this equation is not on your formula sheet, but to find the new stress at my new y face, it's sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2. Hey, compare this to uh, my sigma x prime. I'm oh, sorry. And then minus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 cosine of 2 theta. minus tau xy sine of 2 theta. So this equation right here, not on our formula sheet, <clears throat> it's really my x equation changing those pluses to minuses. So well, you've probably already calculated the x. So go ahead and get this number, this number, and this number in your calculator, and then the x is that number plus that number plus that number. The, the y is you change that to minus and minus. That makes sense. Okay, <clears throat> a few things. Let's be careful about positives and negatives. Be careful about positives and negatives. If we have, uh, let's say this is 30 MPa, and let's say this was drawn here as 20 MPa, and let's say this is 10 MPa, do you see what this says? This says that my sigma x that I'm going to plug in to all these equations is 30. My sigma y that I'm going to plug in, because that's drawn inward, it's in compression, I need to plug in negative 20 right here. Negative 20 right here. Right. I need to plug in negative 20 for my sigma y. And the way that I drew this 10 MPa of shear stress, uh, it is not pointed into that uh, positive corner, it is negative. So my uh, tau xy, negative 10, is what I need to plug in right there. So be careful with positives and negatives. Okay, and then this, this angle theta, this, this angle is the new orientation, new orientation. Um, if you want to rotate counterclockwise from your old orientation. So let's say I've, I know all these stresses. This is at a theta is equal to zero. Um, <clears throat> if I want to know, hey, what are the new stresses at, if I rotated this 25 degrees counterclockwise, counterclockwise is positive. So my theta would be positive 25 degrees if that is counterclockwise. If I wanted to know, hey, what are the stresses at 
10 degrees clockwise, I'd have to plug in negative 10. Okay, so rotating counterclockwise is a positive theta. Rotating clockwise is a negative theta. Got to be careful with positives and negatives. And getting these, get, starting with the correct um, original stresses, and then we're just plugging in, you know, plugging in 30 right here. Plugging in negative 20 right here, 30 minus negative 20, right? Be careful. Plugging in, if I want to know, 25 degrees positive, counterclockwise 25 degrees, right? So plugging in everything uh, correctly. Be careful with positives and negatives. Be careful with signs <clears throat> of everything, all right? But it's not too hard. It's just, right, it's just right now, this method is using these equations on our formula sheet and plugging it in, all right? Doesn't get much easier than that, right? All right.